Hey everybody, it's Keegan here. I'm back with another video for you guys. And today's video, I'm bringing you guys and bringing you guys another edition of Keegan's movie reviews. And today, we're going to be talking about two movies this time. And both of these movies are films that I watched in theaters over the weekend. So uh, let's talk about them. The first film we're going to be talking about is the new Eli Roth slasher film, Thanksgiving, which came out in theaters on Friday, and I saw in theaters on Friday night. And uh, Eli Roth is the same director of films like Hostel, Hostel Part 2, Cabin Fever, the original, of course, from 2002, and not the shitty 2016 remake. And he also directed uh, The Green Inferno, Aftershock, and Knock Knock with Keanu Reeves. Now, interestingly, Thanksgiving originally started out as one of the five fake trailers for the Grindhouse double feature when... Planet Terror and Death Proof both they both were in theaters back in 2007. And uh, apparently Eli Roth really wanted to make the an actual movie based on the fake trailer so badly like after it came out apparently. And it finally came out. And um I got to say I had a lot of fun with this movie, but we'll get to more on that in a bit. And um let's just dive into the storyline of it. And then uh, we'll get my get into my thoughts on it. So let's take a dive into Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving takes place in Plymouth, Massachusetts, Massachusetts, and it takes place around Thanksgiving time, of course. Well, obviously, if it didn't take place around Thanksgiving, it wouldn't be called Thanksgiving. So, anyways, the film starts off with a big riot at a uh, at a Best Buy like store during uh, Black Friday, and then from there, three people die accidentally from the uh, from the big riots at the store. And then it flash forwards to a year later, to the following uh, Thanksgiving. And then from there, hell breaks loose when a, a person dressed up like a pilgrim, I mean, wearing a pilgrim mask, starts going around killing people, specifically the people that were involved at the store and were customers at the store on the night of the Black Friday riot that left three dead. And the killer in this movie is known as the Carver. No, not the Carver from Nip Tuck, the Carver from this movie. And um, from there, there are a group of a group of kids who are start getting cut off, cut down one by one from the killer. And while it's a slasher movie, you get you get the idea of what the story is about. I didn't say this at the start, but I was actually looking looking forward to this movie for a little while when the trailer dropped. I enjoy some of Eli Roth's films. I enjoyed both Hostel movies and the original Cabin Fever. The original Cabin Fever is one of my favorite horror movies. And I haven't seen any of his other films besides Thanksgiving and those other three films. But, yeah. So I went ahead and saw this movie in the theater, and I was pleasantly surprised by it. I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I thought I would, but I really did. And actually, before I saw it in the theater, I didn't realize that this movie was originally a fake trailer for The Grindhouse, which was interesting. And then I actually saw the trailer, the original fake trailer for it when I came home from the movie. And I must say, it's actually fun for a, for a movie that's originally that was originally a fake trailer for The Grindhouse. Well, it's not the only movie that was originally a fake trailer that later became a feature-length film. I know Machete was originally a fake trailer for Planet Terror, and that later became a movie in 2010. And then there was Hobo with a Shotgun that was only present in the Canadian releases, I believe, of uh, the Grand House in Theaters. I'm not sure. I actually have that one on Blu-ray. That's a great one, too. Um, anyways, um, I had a lot of fun with Thanksgiving. It was a very fun slasher film. It was gory. It was over the top. And it's got some great special effects. And, um, it's pretty funny, too. I don't really expect much for slasher movies, but this one was a big surprise. I, I really, really enjoyed it. It had some good kills, too. I really liked the, um, the trampoline scene. That one was pretty... I didn't see that one coming, and uh, I love the, I especially love the diner, the diner kill, 
which I don't want to go into details because I don't want to spoil it. But if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. And actually, after that one ended, when I saw in the theater, this one guy sitting next to me was laughing and like, oh, ho, ho, that was brutal. Holy fuck. And those were his exact words. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. There was a lot of audience reactions that I really liked. And um it's a pretty intense movie too. I especially love the opening scene at the supermarket or whatever it was. The Black Friday at the opening. That was a that was really good. That was a hell of a way to start the movie. But uh all in all, I had a lot of fun with Thanksgiving and I would highly recommend it if you like slasher movies and if you like some of Eli Roth's other films, I think you'd like this one. And yeah, I was actually very surprised by this movie, and I would definitely recommend it if you haven't seen it. Anyways, I don't have anything else to add. I had fun with Thanksgiving, and I will probably watch it again when it comes out to physical, whenever that'll be. And yeah, I had fun with it, and I'm giving Thanksgiving an 8 out of 10. And the last film is one I saw in theaters last night, and I know that this is a movie that's widely regarded as one of the greatest movies of all time. And that is the 1957 film, 12 Angry Men, which was directed by the late Sidney Lumet and was originally released on April 10th, 1957. And like I, like I said before, this movie is regarded as one of the greatest films of all time and is actually at number 5 on the IMDb's top 250 highest rated films of all time list. And um, this is a movie I know is regarded as a classic, but I never watched it before until last night. And I, uh, I really enjoyed it, but we'll get to more on that in a bit. But we'll get into the storyline really quick, and then we'll get into my thoughts on the film. So let's take a dive into 12 Angry Men. So the story of 12 Angry Men is a simple one. It follows a jury of men in a jury room that are all debating on whether to give a young murderer a guilty verdict or not guilty verdict. The killer is an 18-year-old who uh, murdered his uh, father one night and um and if he's found guilty he could be facing a death sentence or if the, if it's a hung jury so the 12 men all this so 11 of the 12 men all vote for a guilty verdict but one of them votes for not guilty and once he gets into his explanation into why he chose not guilty all the men in the room begin to debate and reconsider their their vote for the guilty verdict using logic and possible theories of what occurred on the night of the killing. And without giving away too much, that's basically what the story of the film is about in a nutshell. It's not hard to see why this movie is considered one of the greatest films of all time. I can definitely understand the hype behind this movie. And I can definitely understand it. Like the writing is really, really well done. And the story is so well written and the acting is all phenomenal. Like all the cast members in this movie did a phenomenal job on their performances. And like, it's, it's, it's interesting, especially where the whole movie basically takes place in the jury room. And you have these 12 guys debating whether to give, the killer a guilty verdict or a not guilty verdict since the uh the killer is a young man who murdered his father allegedly on purpose or something and um they go on to, to debate that the uh the killer had a, a really rough childhood why he uh, snapped because the father was allegedly abusive and uh, it, it was quite interesting and it's a really well acted and a really well directed film, too. Like it was, it was one that I really really enjoyed. Now I wouldn't call it the greatest film of all time, but it is one of the greatest films of all time for sure. And I have really really enjoyed it, and it's one that's been on my cro on my watch list for a while, and I finally crossed it off. And uh, yeah, I um I really enjoyed it. I don't really have a whole lot else to add to it. And I will probably check it out again one day. But all in all, I really, really enjoyed 12 Angry Men. It's definitely a classic film, for sure. But anyways, I don't have anything else to add. So I'm giving 12 Angry Men an 8.6 out of 10. I know it's not a 9, but I think 8.6 out of 10 is good enough for me, I guess. But once again, great film.
Anyways, that wraps up another edition of Keegan's Movie Reviews. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, as always, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment below, subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and share the video with your friends. And follow me on my other social medias. Links are in the description down below, like they always are. And, uh, yeah, guys. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. So, anyways, until next time, this is Keegan Shepard signing off. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And, uh, yeah, take care, everybody. Peace out. Bye-bye.